the Mastergrade Crossbone X1. This is a fine kit with one major flaw. The Crossbone X1 itself is kind of a generic Gundam, but its uniqueness comes from the giant cape that drapes over its shoulders. I felt like the cape was a bit of an afterthought, and that was the main issue that I wanted to attempt to correct with this model kit. Uh, my inspiration for fixing the design of the cape came from various other iterations of the Crossbone X1. The Metal Figure, the Real Grade, the Manga, and the Gundam vs. video game series. I also took note of the pirate theme of the Crossbone series to come up with my final design. Finally, the cape in the Master Grade is not poseable in any way, and I really wanted to make it so the Crossbone X1 could hold an interesting pose involving the cape while it's placed on my shelf. The first thing I wanted to address was the thrusters. Uh, you can see here I'm marking where the thrusters should come out of the cape. In the Gundam vs video game, the X-shaped thruster array comes out of the back of the cape, and I really like the look of that. So I just used a paint bottle to trace a circle onto the back of the cape, which I then cut out with uh, an X-Acto knife and some scissors. I wasn't entirely sure how everything was going to come out, so I was test fitting the cape onto the kit uh, pretty much all the way through the process to make sure that I liked the way that it looked. Um, so next up here, I am just following the directions guide for fraying the edges of the cape. This is pretty easy. You just, again, use the X-Acto knife and some scissors. Uh, it didn't take too long to go around all the edges and just fray it to look how I want it. Once again, I'm test fitting it onto the kit, and while it's on the kit, I'm marking a few spots that I think some battle damage would look okay on. And that's what I'm doing here. Again, just using the exacto knife to cut out the shapes that I like. Next up, I'm going to add the wire to the cape that to give it the posability. I tried a few different designs and this is the one that I ended up with, which is uh, I'm going to have it running along the front edges of the cape and in the back, just going in the middle. The plan is to feed the wire from the back to the front and then fold the uh, front edges of the cape over the wire and glue it in place. So what you're seeing here is that I'm marking where I think the wire should be fed through. So I'll cut a hole and feed the wire through uh, from the back through to the front. And this part here, I wasn't quite sure which glue I should use. So I tried an acrylic glue and I tried super glue and it looked like the super glue was uh, working pretty well, so ultimately that's what I went with. And I started off by gluing in the middle, which it glued fairly quickly, but I used some tape to hold it in place so it could keep working. Um, fed the wire through to the front and glued it down as I mentioned before. And I repeat the process with the other side, trimming the excess wire. And I didn't have enough of the more rigid wire that came with the kit, so I took some 
a wire that I already had and cut it to length. Since this part, since the part in the middle isn't really structural, uh, I figured this would be okay. And it does work, but it's not quite as rigid as I would have liked. So I glued it in place, taped it down just like I did with the other more rigid wire. pretty happy with the rigidity of the cape here and I'm testing out the flexibility of the posing and it's all working as expected. Uh, the white wire stood out a little bit too much though so I went ahead and painted it black and I'm going to come in with uh, some spray paint and just paint the whole inside of the cape black. That will help to hide the crimes of the wires kind of being a little messy and the um, any white wire that may still be exposed. Um, after the test fit here I was pretty happy with the posability but the edges, the raw edges where the wire were kind of looked a little bit messy. So my solution was to kind of sew on these black edges. Started by cutting two collar pieces in this shape and placed them right sides together and sewed the top edge of those two pieces. Then took the took that and turned it inside out so that the outside is now the right side and took the outside edges and folded them under and essentially sandwiched that around the cape and then sewed it down. And what this does is it gives you a nice clean edge on the top and nice clean edges on the bottom. Now I know I said I was doing this work, but I actually enlisted my wife to help me out because I am not much of a sewer. And once the collar was sewed on, we could start on the edges. So for these, it was a bit easier. We just used one full rectangle, fold it in half and iron it so you have a nice seam, and then fold the outside edges under and iron them. And then again, sandwich it around the edges of the cloak and sew it down. And we left the collar open a bit so that we could feed the edges underneath the collar and sew it down. I was very fortunate to get my wife to help me with this. She has shown me how to sew and told me how to sew several times and I just always forget. Um, luckily I could ask her to make clothes for my dolls and she jumped in happily and helped me out. Next up I needed a way to connect the two sides together so we used some gold jewelry chain and some clothing hook and eyelets. I wasn't sure about the jewelry at chain at first, but uh, I really think it helped to add more of a pirate look to the overall uh, model kit. So next up, I wanted to add some buttons to the cape that look like this. And what I did is I took some thumbtacks and I cut off either side of the thumbtack. So I started off, doesn't matter where, and put them into the pliers and cut off one side. And then flipped it over and tried to make a parallel cut, um, at least as close to parallel as possible on the other side. And then you can use the pliers to break off where you scored the thumbtack. Uh, 
I did this eight times. Uh, I planned to put four on either side of the cape, but I ended up only using three on, e on either side, so I have two extra. Um, and since these were a little bit rough, I went ahead and took some files and just kind of uh, softened up the edges. I didn't go too crazy, just enough to so that I wouldn't uh, accidentally cut myself. And then I took some brass airbrush paint and just hand brushed that on to the thumbtacks after putting a primer coat on them. This went on pretty well. And lastly, I took some clear lacquer and sprayed all of the buttons. I felt like this would be a little bit more sturdy on the metal than just putting a my, one of my acrylic clear coats on top. I already had this lacquer. If I didn't already have it, then I probably just would have used the acrylic clear coat on top. And this is what it looks like on the cape. What I did is I measured about an inch apart. Uh, I picked a spot near the top and then measured about an inch down from that. Uh, I have a few marks with sharpie but you can't really see them and I just took a an exacto knife and roughly tried to get to center and then just poked the end of the thumbtack through Now, once I was happy with the placement on the thumbtacks, I took another pair of pliers and I just bent over the end of the thumbtack to try and keep it in place. Uh, I think what I'll do in the future is maybe add a little drop of super glue to keep them from rotating around, but this holds them in place and they're still adjustable. And that's what you're left with. And the last thing I did to the cape is I wanted to add a little bit of weathering. So I just took some black and some brown and I went all around the bottom edge of the cape and added some kind of dirt look to it with the brown and the black and I added some black around the uh, holes that I cut earlier to kind of make it look like they had been scored by blaster fire or uh, beam saber or something like that. I wanted to keep this kit looking mostly true to its original look and uh, so I didn't actually do a full paint job. I mostly just did some color correction for the yellow on the shoulders and um, the backpack, the, the X thrusters and I added some red to the face to give it that uh, nice mean looking red stripe. And if you're not familiar with uh, doing like a, a wash effect, um, my paint job here was not very good. 
but all I had to do was come back in with some rubbing alcohol and ta-da, I have a nice clean line there. Um, worked pretty well. So I mostly was just adding a little bit of detail to the backpack here and just to give it a little more um, pop than all that gray, just the, all the gray look there. So just a little bit of metallic copper and metallic silver and otherwise I mostly just stuck to the uh, original paint job with just some color corrections. Next up I used Tamiya panel line to, uh, to fill in all the panel line. I used gray for all the white parts and if you're not familiar with how that works it's just a capillary action you come back in with uh, lighter fluid or naphtha to clean up where you've messed up. Um, I used black on the dark parts, like the the blue, and I used brown on the yellow parts and the red parts. And I apologize, it was kind of hard to keep this in focus, but uh, this is just a mess of white and gray panel liner. So what I'm using, what I'm doing is I'm using naphtha here to try and clean up the, uh, the panel line from where I didn't want it to go. And it mostly worked out. Um, if it doesn't look perfect, it's it just kind of looks like the mobile suit got a little messy, but I think it mostly looks fine. And my original plan was to use the stickers that came with the kit. I typically don't use the clear marking stickers. Uh, I just don't think they work very well, or at least I've heard other people complain about them. But this time I was going to give them a fair shot and it was a mess. Uh, I, took, I started with these uh, V-shaped bits that go on the end of the thrusters. And first of all, they weren't actually the correct size so I would have needed to cut them down to fit which I actually tried to do and the first one went on okay and then the second one that I cut uh, just tore so <laughs> I immediately abandoned that and went to using some uh, clear some uh, red decals that I had purchased separately so I'm trying to find some that look okay, and uh, I think these will work just fine. And here's an example where I went ahead and used the water slide decals. And if you look down on the blue section of the torso, I also used some of the white marking decals, uh, the dry transfer decals from the original kit. but. Uh, I didn't use anything else. And here we are, we're pretty much done, just throwing it back together.